Hey Pod Squad, welcome back. I'm Diksha, a third year podiatric medical student. And last year, Yona and I and another podiatry student worked together to interview a few people in podiatry. Unfortunately, we didn't get those interviews out to you, but we'll be trying to get them out as soon as possible. Today is the first interview we'd like to release. It's with Dr. Adam Hotchkiss. And Dr. Adam Hotchkiss has an incredible YouTube channel if you haven't seen it yet. It's about being a dietary resident and how he balances everything. It's wonderful and inspirational. Today, our interview is going to be about Dr. Adam Hotchkiss and his program. We only have the second half of the interview and not the first half. But the second half, again, it's a lot of information. You definitely want to watch it. Enjoy the interview. And where we left off was just getting into like the surgical aspect of it. So like what are some of your favorite like surgeries and what did you really get into where you were like, man, I really enjoy this. And I can also see like me adding like my own flavor to it. Um, that's hard right now. I still feel like I'm still so new. Like I honestly don't know. Um, yeah, I really don't know. I kind of, I don't think I ever really want to do things like Charcot recon. Um, I've been through like some of them and standing around for like four or five, six hours. I'm, these like crazy long cases of someone who's probably just going to shark hoe out again and the foot's going to break down again. Like yeah. I don't like that at all. Yeah. Trauma is kind of fun because that's kind of just taking like a mess and trying to make it better. And uh, you know, it's kind of cool. It's fun. I like trauma right. stuff. Yeah. Uh, things like total ankles and stuff. I'm not really sure if I'm into them or not yet. Um, is I'm watching now to have rates or is it just, too is it because of the success rates of TARs or? No, I just don't know. Um, I think I just have to be out in my own practice and figure out what I like and things, you know, and it'll come into like reimbursement and stuff like that, I'm sure too, which I don't know these things at all yet. Right. Um, as a, as a resident, it's kind of fun to do any and everything. And as a resident, I want to be good and able to do all of that. Like I do want to be able to do Charcot Recon well. I want to be able to do trauma well and total ankle replacements well, like really good because I think as a doctor of any type, you should be the absolute best that you can be. Yeah. Like not, not for any cocky reasons, not because you want your name to be known. Like it's because you are like, literally you can kill somebody, you know? Yeah. And you are even in the foot, like we can kill people by operating on their foot. You cut a vessel or something, you can make them sick. You can ruin the way they walk or lose a limb because of you, you know? So Honestly, I want to be the absolute best physician that I can, and I think that's what residency is about. So right now, I'm just kind of trying to soak in everything and be the absolute best that I can be, and just for the, and, and I don't want to, like, I definitely don't want to be the next best doctor. I don't want to be in textbooks. I don't want to publish crazy amounts of papers, but I want to be really good for every single patient that I see, you know? So um, right now, I have fun with everything and just soaking up everything. And I think that's what most residents... Yeah, and that's a very things. good legitimate answer. Like, hey, I just want to be like the best podiatrist and the best foot and ankle by just knowing how to do the vast, you know, majority and variety of things. Yeah. And that's... Like, really I don't cool. know in my practice, like maybe I'll love it. Maybe I'll like really love total ankles and I'll be known for that. Or maybe I will just be doing like wound care and the occasional bunion or something. But when I do those, like I want those bunions to be perfect. Like I want them to be bunions that I'd be like that I would do to my mom or sister or brother, you know, like they better be amazing and perfect. And I want the training to make sure that I come out, you know, able to do that stuff. And yeah, I think no. each, like mm -hmm. each student, each resident should keep that in mind that, you know, you're going to be working on the human being and we don't really get the luxury in our career to make mistakes. You know, when we make mistakes, people suffer. And we don't really get the luxury to say like, oh, I'm a little bored. Or, like I'm tired right now. Like I'm just going to give it half, you know, like we don't get to do that. Cause if you do that, you're hurting somebody. So right. something to think about. And so far, um, is there a clinical case that you really like thought was interesting? Anything that you want to share? Like one case where you were like, oh man, we just had to do this, but then that didn't work. And then we had to fix it with that. Um, probably like when you brought up the thing about like interviews and what was the coolest case you saw as a student and stuff. Mine was probably, um, as a student, this is the coolest thing I've seen and just so cool to see medicine going this way. Um, this patient had like terrible osteomyelitis of her calcaneus, which normally is kind of like, okay, this person's going to need a BKA because you can't really do things like show pars, amputations and things like that. Yeah. It's going to leave for a non-functional foot, but these uh, surgeons, and it was the one in Ohio, 
they came up with the idea to get a 3D printed titanium calcaneus and wow. put that in. And I got to see it and I was like, this is mind blowing. Like we're, that is we're really cool. like making like a robot, you know, like this is <laughs> like, like this person's like yeah, metal, 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 calcaneus. Like that was so awesome. And that's kind of the way that our career is going, which is really cool that we can do stuff like that. And I mean, even doing things like ankle replacements are so cool to like, you know, we take this joint that has historically, if it fails, you pretty much have to fuse it. And now we're putting in a whole new joint. Pretty sweet. Yeah. And I totally agree with you. The cyborg part of putting in a whole titanium calcaneum. Yeah, that's that amazing. Is, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. Is, is that so doing fine? fine? Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> is that patient still doing good like are they not like are they honestly i don't know they're that's <laughs> off in ohio i have no idea but while i was there it was really cool to see right on cool yeah. yeah so um in your program i was curious do you have a lot of research that you all do or what is that because you were saying that's not something you're terribly interested in yeah um yeah our director dr Prose, she's big on research and now she's like kind of making it a requirement. I think most programs that make it somewhat of a requirement, like you need to at least put out a poster, like act fast or something, or try to publish a case study or something by the time you leave, and she's making it a requirement. Nice. Um, my issue like with making research a requirement is I feel like a lot of poor research gets put out that way, personally, mm -hmm. because yeah. kind of we're just like, oh, I have to do this, what can I like, oh, I'll get an N of two and I'll write this paper and it means nothing and it changes absolutely nothing, you know? Yeah. Where if you're really passionate about something and you are really curious, like, well, doing, with doing this change the way we practice medicine, you might give a lot of heart and effort into it and make a good paper. So I don't know. I'm personally not into it right now. I just want to learn as much as I can surgically, but doing research in any way is going to increase my knowledge base and increase, you know, my ability as a physician, so... It's a good thing, I guess. Right on. Uh, Yona likes his Netflix and chill and his dates or whatever, and he wanted to know, <laughs> uh, how on call are you? Like, how are your weekends? And like, like, how free are you or how busy? Yeah, my program is actually awesome now. Um, the call, I feel like it's, I can't complain. What we do is we take a month of call at a time, but in that month, we take day call. So that's 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then we hand off the pager to one of our co-residents at 5 p.m. They hold the pager until the next morning at 5 a.m. And you only do a week of that night call at a time. So okay. we rotate that mainly between the first and second years. The third years, I don't think, have any night or day call at my program. So right now, I was day call. So that meant Monday through Friday, I was 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Holding the pager, dealing with any inpatient stuff that came along. One of my co-residents would take the pager at night and on the weekends. So... Yeah, it's pretty chill. There, every now and then you get an overlap where you're on 24-7. And I've had some pretty crazy weeks, but we're doctors, we're residents, and that's what you're supposed to do. So I've had, you know, I've been called in the middle of the night, had to go in for things and got stuck there until the next day. But honestly, it's not that bad. My program is pretty awesome when it comes to that. So <laughs> you can definitely live a normal life still. In my program, there's other programs, like if you're the only resident, like a one resident program, you might be on like all day, every day for <laughs> right. a year. How many residents does your program have? Three? Um, three per year. So, or wait, no, do we? We have four per year, so 12 total. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Oh, okay. That's good. That's good. Because like right now, I mean, I don't know total how many we have. Swedish are <laughs> not, I don't know how I said we. <laughs> and Swedish. Well, you're part of the group now. <laughs> <laughs> and they just, have, they just have two residents that they take and it gets so busy some of the residents are on call just on the weekends and that's like i would say so far one of the downsides of our program but yeah well, that's, this program. that can be like I, I actually really i'm weird i'm the weird one of my group like i love being on call and i'm like <laughs> my girlfriend thinks it's probably annoying to her to be like i like being called most of the time. Now I'm kind of burning out at it, but in the beginning, I was like, <laughs> I'd be pumped. I'd be like, yeah, I, I get to go in. Like, they need me. Like, they need my specialty. Like, I get to go put my training to work, and I'd be pumped to go in the middle of the night and, like, suit triple laceration or something. Like, that stuff is cool to me. I don't know. That's what all those years of, like, being a student, being in your shoes, like, wondering why the I was studying pharmacology, and then you're, oh, like, yeah. and you're like, oh, I know oh. what, like, what antibiotic is going to fix this bug that we just cultured, and, like, you get to put all that to use finally. 
So yeah. I actually liked it. Nice. Right on. Uh, so I wanted to ask, uh, um, do you guys work alongside with orthopedic surgeons? Yeah. And do, so they, do they have priority over surgeries that you guys also do? Because I, I, I've heard, like, I've, I've looked into programs where orthos and uh, podiatrists work together, but orthos have the say if they want to take over that ankle reconstruction surgery that day versus the podiatrist is like, okay, I have to just, I have to wait if the ortho wants that or not. So at my program, we get all foot and ankle. If by some reason a primary care accident, like an ankle fraction or ortho's, like that's not ours, that's 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 but as wow. far as like foot and ankle, we get all of it. So we get all ankle trauma, all foot trauma, anything lower extremity we're getting. So that's awesome. A, a huge bonus in our program. Uh, that's mm-hmm. good because I know there's a lot of like, especially as a student and hearing like all these things with orthos and how we have this conflict with orthos all the time. Like, do we actually get the amount of surgical experience they do? And do we, do we have priority? It's nice to hear that your program actually has all these surgical cases that are related to foot and ankle going straight to yeah. you guys. Yeah, it's really cool. Our, our program was like, I, podiatry is the only residency, or I guess there's a PM&R, so physical medicine and rehabilitation residency, and there's a farm residency at our program, but we are the main presence at the VA. Um, we get all the other residents from Banner. They're there too, all the medicine residents and everything. So there's a ton of residents there, but they're Banner residents at our institution and we're VA residents. So that's like our place. And we get a ton of respect. We're definitely the biggest um, program there. We're the biggest presence there. Like I'm saying, we're seeing 120 patients a day. So like probably like half the inpatients at any given time have some type of podiatric issue. Like even now with the COVID, like these patients coming in who have COVID usually have a foot ulcer or something too. So we're right there along as part of their care. So it's pretty cool. We get a lot of respect and then we rotate with all of them. Like when we do like internal medicine rotations, radiology rotations, dermatology, and we, when you go, it's not like, oh, that's the podiatrist. That's just the other resident. Like they don't look at me as I'm anything different. Like I'm sitting there working at heart failure alongside them. No difference. So that's, that's, that's really cool. And they, yeah. And then I, it's, I think it's really good for our profession because um, some, like some of the interns, they come in and they're like, I was actually told by, I think she was a, she was a med peds, like third or fourth year resident. I did infectious disease with her. It was her and I on the rotation. At the end of the rotation, she was like, I really enjoyed this month with you. And it was awesome before this. I had no idea what podiatry was like. She was like, not to be mean, but I thought you guys just did nails. And (laughs) she's like, after this month with you, like I realized you guys are a real physician and I'm never giving you a nail consult again. And I was like, (laughs) I was right there in the trenches with her the whole month. Like we, there's no difference in our training. We have the exact same training. And I think like the public should know too, you know, like, yeah. We're taking, like, as a resident, you are required to do general medicine, general surgery, infectious disease. You're right there along with MDs and DOs doing the exact same thing and no preference. Or it's not like they're like, oh, you get the easy ones. Like, no, you're part of the team. You're doing everything that they are. So. Agreed. Exactly. Yeah. No, and I'm, I'm glad you say that because, like, seriously, that's, that's, um, we have our own personal Instagram and we deal with that all the time. Daily questions it's given up to us, like, how are you guys any different? Like, do you guys just do nails only all day? And we're like, no, we don't. We seriously so don't. Much. Yeah, we actually don't do nails at our, uh, if we get a consult for nails, we, we just say discontinue. We don't do it. <laughs> uh, I, that's, that's new. As a resident, like we don't, it's cool as a resident. If I'm in private practice, I'm definitely going to go in and make that money. Because <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, nails can make money. So right. if I'm making money for nails, like, that whatever i'll make the money like yeah. That's cool. yeah yeah um so should we last question yeah do you, okay so oh yeah go ahead okay well last question is would you end up moving back to california i know you said that this is your house but yeah i know you have a house yeah <laughs> <laughs> pretty awesome um no i don't think so i don't think i'm going to it's just way too expensive like 
Mm-hmm. Literally, yeah, it's insane. It's way too expensive. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, something to like start thinking about too is like, like I said, like in residency or trying to pick a residency where you're going to be able to live a decent life. That's going to be the same in like practice too. Um, I definitely recommend to like all third, fourth year students start listening to like the white coat investor. I don't know if you guys have yet. Or oh yeah. Know. A lot of people have been recommending that. Yeah. 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 Huge. Right. And they often talk about, he, they call it like geographical arbitrage. So like if you're billing Medicare as a physician, you're getting the same reimbursement in California as you are in like Nebraska and your cost of living at California where like a one bedroom house is like hers versus Nebraska where a million dollars gets to a mansion. Right, right. right. <laughs> Should so, be. <laughs> I love California, but I don't think I'll go back. I, I like it here a lot. It's pretty cool other than the heat. <laughs> no, that's that's nice to hear. I, I feel like I, I just want to leave this out there for viewers. It's just if you have a struggle and if you're having a financial struggle, don't continue living in a place where it's financially struggling for you and it's a burden like a lot of people feel like oh i live here and i it's making me like i'm losing a lot of money living here no just move somewhere where you can afford it and it's going to be easier on you financially like and that's a lot and there are great places out there like you were saying i mean arizona i have a bunch of family in arizona texas michigan oregon you know and they're they're all great places they're all great I kind of have like these certain things. Like I don't want to live in a place where it's like a ton of snow. So that like takes yeah. out like part of the country. <laughs> and then, and then, right. There's a, like, I also really don't want to deal with a lot of humidity. So like that kind of takes out the South too. And then yeah. I'm kind of like, really don't want to be somewhere where there's like Confederate flags flying and stuff, you know? So <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> like you have your few things and narrow it down to a few States. And, like, <laughs> I know like I can live in a few States and, and yeah, figure out where it works best for you. Right. No, that's that's really cool. nice to hear. Sweet. Well, this has been one of our favorite interviews so far. So yeah, Adam, thank you, thank you yeah, for no like giving us the lowdown on pretty much everything, and you know, making it like raw, real, and just keeping it real with us about all yeah, of it. For sure. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Yeah, and we can't wait for your next YouTube. And you know, you're definitely inspirational, and you know, we'll definitely There's be some of your biggest there. fans. Yeah, <laughs> thank and you. We'll thank following you. your DPM journey along the way. And yeah, thanks for always doing, making- like currently doing a day of eating right now, and then this will be like a little blurb in it. So, <laughs> for your viewers oh, right to that, and then I will send my viewers to watch you guys. Ah, oh, awesome. Thank, That's you awesome. Thank, thank you so much, Doctor. And we, we really appreciate you having the time and putting time for us to really make this. Uh, podcast with us and really just share really valuable information with people of course i appreciate it too so thank you again thank you All everybody right. for joining us and have a great day yeah you guys too see ya Pod, signing, signing out. out take care guys <laughs>